Welcome back to another episode of Out of the Bubble Podcast. My name is Rachel Peru. I hope you've all had a great week. Today's guest is such an inspiring lady. I have followed her on Instagram at Bumble Barbs for quite some time now, and every morning I see her posts of her wild swimming adventures and uh, really feel like it's something that I want to be able to join in with. So today we're going to be talking to Sarah Barnes, and she's the perfect example of how starting something new at any age can lead to new opportunities. So if you've ever wanted to know more about wild swimming, this is definitely the episode for you. Grab a coffee, enjoy. Oh, good morning, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, good morning. And, you know, thank you for asking me. It's a pleasure. Lovely we were to talk- meet you. We were talking before we've just come on live now about how when you, you follow people on Instagram for quite a long time, you feel like you already know them, even though you don't, don't you? That's right. It, it is bizarre. I think it's a lovely place to be, actually, because I feel people are happy to share their stories um, and share their lives a little bit. So you do actually get to know people. And I've met quite a few of them actually in real life, too. So it's been great. Yeah, no, likewise. And so for people that don't know anything about you, how do you introduce yourself to people? Um, It depends who I'm meeting. (laughs) But I think mostly I would say I'm a writer, first and foremost, Um, although I'm a mother, first and foremost. But me as a person, I'm a writer and I'm also an an outdoors person. I love being outdoors. Um, And I've recently found wild swimming seems to be my passion. Um, although I also love running, trail running, cycling. So that's me, really. I mean, amazing. And your, your Instagram feed, for those that don't know, is, is Bumble Barnes. And it's just such an inspiring feed. And I look at it every morning Thank and think, you. wow, it's just, you know, you make me want to get out there into nature even oh, more great. than I do. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. So I can definitely recommend people go and look you up. You've always been active, but you didn't come to, to wild swimming until later on in life, did you? So how did, how did that start? Um, yes, I've always been active. It's mostly been running, walking in the mountains, uh, cycling. But uh, in 2017, I had a very ser- serious um, operation on both legs for osteoarthritis. And I had to be in a wheelchair for eight weeks. And I thought then I would get my eureka moment and that'd be it. I'd be off back up the mountains again and doing everything I loved. Unfortunately, it wasn't very successful. And it's taken nearly four years now, three and a half years, to really be able to walk properly again and not to have any pain, not much pain. I still get a bit of pain when I'm walking. Um, So really, I had to find something for my sanity that would get me into the outdoors again. Um, So as soon as I could walk on crutches, I got somebody to drive me to the lake and I just, I went in it. I didn't care what happened. I just got in the water um, and I thought, yep, this is something I could do. Because at that point I could just float about. I was able to look up at the mountains around me and I was back in my happy place, which is the outdoors. Um, And it kind of started from there. I just increased my confidence gradually. What effect did it have on your confidence? Because she had gone from being really active to, to then being in pain and really kind of crippled with, with this. What, what effect did that have on your confidence during that time? Do you mean the, the lack of being able yeah, to Yeah, the, the lack of being able to do that, yeah. It, it was devastating because I got to the point where I could um, just cycle as far as I wanted. I could cycle up any hill I wanted. I could... I, I felt good about myself, you know, in terms of my my body shape, my fitness for my age. Um, I had something to do every day. And then when I started getting the osteoarthritis, I found I couldn't really run without pain. I couldn't walk without pain. I couldn't get in and out of the shower without it hurting. Um, the pain started to just wear me down. Mm. Um, And it shows on your face when you're constantly in pain, your face drops um, and your body shape changes. Um, I think I shrunk a couple of inches Mm -hmm. because I was permanent. I went bow legged. So actually I shrunk, literally Mm -hmm. shrunk. Um, And I, I just, I could not walk anymore. And I'd always been, people had always noticed how I walked. I'm tall. I'm five foot 10. And when I started shrinking and sinking into my legs, I 
didn't walk the same. I, I walked as if I was 80 and I realized that I didn't like how I looked. So I completely lost my confidence there. Not that I'd had a huge amount, but you know, completely lost my confidence in how I looked. Um, I had a relationship at that point and he really didn't want to go out with me anymore because of how I looked and how I walked. Um, he found it embarrassing. So that wasn't great. Um, <sighs> but you, I kept getting knocks to my confidence over that time. Um, and I really thought that was how I was going to be. And I was 52, 53. So I kind of tried to find a way to think that that is how my world was going to be. Um, and then this consultant offered me the operation and I just went for it. I just said, yeah, I, I need to not be in this place anymore. It's not yeah. doing me any good at all. Yeah. And then that just shows the power of being in nature and being in the water that's had on you, the impact it's had. It's not just the physical impact. It's also that mental impact. isn't it? Absolutely. That's... Absolutely. Yeah. But it didn't start. I mean, to start with, I, I didn't really want to wear a swimsuit. I didn't want to show my legs because of they were still quite bent. Um, they still are a bit. The scars were horrible. You know, it took me a long time to want to have photographs taken of me mm -hmm. swimming or in my bathing costume. Um, I found that my smile changed. Um, I mean, when you're in pain, your smile is quite forced anyway. Yeah. <laughs> everything tenses up but prior to that I never really trusted my smile I didn't know that I had a nice smile um, and so but when you go in the water there's something that happens to your muscles in your face they just they relax um, and suddenly you feel the corners of your mouth just turn up and of course when you do that you smile with your teeth because I'd never smiled with my teeth. Yeah. You know, bizarrely. It's all these little things I noticed happened to me. And suddenly I had this huge grin and I used to call it my insane grin um, because it just appeared. I didn't put it there. It just came mm. through the power of the water mm. um, and it stayed with me. And it's that something I noticed. No, no, you know, lots of people say um, that they go wild swimming. And, you know, I tried it last summer. I started doing it last, last summer in the river nearby. And I absolutely love it. And I can definitely feel the benefits of it. But I have only done it when it's been nice and mild and warm and sunny. <laughs> <laughs> and I have never taken that next step. Now, that's the temperature's definitely not been a barrier to you, has it? You have done it all year round. This is the fourth winter that I've done it. And... I can tell the temperature by how it makes me feel or how my hands feel. Um, and it's a challenge. It's a wonderful thing to be able to do is walk into the water and the cold no longer feels like cold. It's painful, mm. but I don't think of it as cold. Um, so the temperatures now that I go in are probably about between naught degrees and two degrees of the water. Wow. Um, and how long do you stay in for it? How long, how long are you in that water temperature? Maximum I've been in is about 10 minutes. Right. Um, and that was when I was actually swimming in the lake. I can sit in the water, not, not moving, maybe with my hands out um, for about seven minutes. Mm. And you feel your body changing. And then suddenly you feel yourself smiling. It's, uh, it's it's a physical thing but it's also very cerebral yeah and i know there's been lots of research hasn't there about cold water swimming and how it's so good for you physically and mentally and yes you know yes. i think it's it's what i love about you is how you know you you show every morning you, you show these great pictures on instagram but your body confidence and your confidence to to represent women of our age group is fantastic. I love seeing it. And I think we're so underrepresented in this way. How do you feel now when you are putting yourself so visible out on Instagram in swimming costumes and, and naked sometimes? And, you know, yeah. have you, have you become more comfortable with that? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, I think I did spend 
quite a lot of time last lockdown doing the couch to 5k so I did lose a bit of weight which if you know you're carrying a little extra and you don't feel comfortable about it then you if you lose it you suddenly you have that confidence already um and I I don't mind showing my body when I'm in a swimsuit because it's in context yeah um I'm not showing my body to say oh look at my legs and look at my bottom you know I'm yeah. I'm showing my body because of what it can do yeah um and it's an incredible machine really and it's improving with age yeah because and I love I'm understanding that. it better yeah um, I love that that's you know that's so inspiring just just the fact that you've just said that that's that's the thing that we need to see more of for women being able to share yeah, what, what our bodies can do in midlife you know we're, yeah. we're not we're certainly not past it if anything we're just absolutely. getting started again absolutely and i know that the japanese call it the second spring and mm. it is it it's your opportunity because you know yourself better um and you've maybe had some illnesses and you've got over them or you've accepted them you know your limits um and you know how far you can push yourself yeah. and every time you push yourself just that little further you feel a bit braver and then you go again um so it's the same with my photographs um you know and the swimsuits i choose to wear or not wear it's every time i just push it that little bit more yeah and i think okay, I've just flashed my bum <laughs> in a swimsuit to God knows how many people. But yeah, I feel good about it. Yeah. You know, and why not? Um, yeah, it's, absolutely. It, you know, I'm not 23. It's, I haven't got the bottom of a 23-year-old. I have the bottom of a nearly 59-year-old and I'm proud of it. Um, yeah. And we should all be. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure the responses you get back from other women that have seen those pictures are always really positive as well. Well, they are and there's some great ones from men as well mm. you know i think men want to see women out there yeah loving themselves you know confident there's nothing more attractive to anybody than a confident person be mm. that a man or a woman and there's a difference between confidence and arrogance um yes. you know it's a subtle difference but it shows as well yeah yeah well, I love, I love what you're doing. And, you know, you do live in a really beautiful part of the country. You live in the Lake District and it's stunning. You know, I've, I've spent a lot of time there and, and it's a really, really beautiful place to, to go and visit. But, you know, we were, we were briefly talking before we, we went live about how, you know, it is quite a, a rural location. So how, do, what, certainly what's the impact been the last year in the pandemic on, on your life? How, has, how have you managed through that? How has it made you feel? Uh, it's actually made me feel really good and I feel bad saying that but I have felt less lonely over the last year than in the last 25 years that I've been living here because wow. suddenly everybody else is like me you know and I've got all the tools to cope on my own to cope with the isolation you know I do get lonely um, but I, I know what to do and I think what's been really apparent is the lack of resilience with people during this pandemic mm. and people not at home, stuck at home, not knowing what to do. Now, to me, I don't understand that because I have too many things to do. Mm. You know, sometimes my head is bursting with things I want to do creatively yeah. or somewhere I can go and walk or go and have a run maybe it's just me maybe I've always been like that um but over the last year I have found a routine I've been in contact with my daughter every day because she's been furloughed so mm. she's got time to talk to me yeah. um and I've been posting more on Instagram because i the responses I've got are people want to see this they want to live vicariously um, whether it's other swimmers who can't easily get to where they usually swim. Yeah. You know, instead of the, nobody's envious. Um, they just want to see these beautiful places to be reminded of nature and what's out there and what real life is, because hopefully this isn't real life. This isn't the new norm. Yeah. Um, but for me, certainly it's actually been a really wonderful year. And 
Um, that's that's because really good. I to felt hear. like everybody else. Yeah, no, that's really good to hear. And I think you're so right about the resilience, and I completely relate to the having a head full of ideas. I actually seem to have achieved more this year in, yeah. in individual projects than I have done in, in a long time, and, and and kind of have it's almost set up a new momentum for me, which is interesting. So it's an that's interesting really good, time, yes. isn't it? Yes, yeah, I think it's wonderful. I mean, lots of people, I, I would imagine lots of people refer to you as being brave um, f- for doing what you're doing. How does that make you feel? I think I am brave mm. in, in many ways. I think, um, okay, three, three ways. I think for a, a woman my age, nearly 60, which, you know, used to be thought of as getting on a bit, um, it's brave to start something new, but it's incredibly important to mm. start new things. Um, it's cold. It's potentially life-threatening. Um, so that's that's brave. I go on my own an awful lot. And everybody always advises, you hear everybody say, never go on your own. I go on my own because um, I know that I'm just going to walk into the water and sit down and I know my body and I know how long I can be in there but I wouldn't re- recommend new people to go on their own you do yeah. need somebody else there because you, yeah. you need to understand the cold um so I think that's three reasons I, I think it is brave yes no I do but it doesn't mean nobody else can do it you know yeah it takes one little bit of bravery and then as I said just try again be a little bit braver and it makes you feel brave in every other aspect of your life I think that's what I've found you carry that braveness with you throughout everything yeah so has it helped you step out of your comfort zone in lots of different aspects of your life then yes definitely talking to you for one thing (laughs) Um, I used to hate the sound of my own voice I don't like talking about myself Um, I I yeah so that um wearing swimsuits in public I seem to spend most of my life with no clothes on a swimsuit on or really scruffy clothes Mm. um shivering um other ways talking to new people on Instagram you know the messages um trying to create lots of interaction and you know, working quite hard at it actually, because communication is really important, but it takes hard work and it takes time. Yeah. Um, so, and I used to be really, really shy, incredibly shy. Uh, I'm just doing lots of things on my own. I've always done things on my own. However, this bravery this particular bravery shows me that my body is capable of so many things and when you your mind and body work together you know I, I think you can do anything yeah definitely no, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I set up the podcast is to try and encourage people to step out of their comfort zone because you can achieve mm. so much more than you think you can and by sharing these inspiring stories hopefully it will motivate other people to to take yeah. those first steps so how would you recommend people get started because it is quite a daunting thing to know where to start to go while swimming so what are the kind of key things that we can recommend to people that they could have a try uh, it depends where you live I think at the moment, if you live where there isn't easy access to a safe spot um, or an organised swimming venue, then that's a bit more tricky because if the rivers are in full flow, you wouldn't want to go there. But um, looking on the positive side, when things start opening again, I would actually advise people to go along and perhaps have a a lesson, um, perhaps in a group or one-to-one, or to look on facebook um look on facebook pages like the outdoor swimming society and they have all sorts of swimming groups all over the country and if you choose one that's near you you can start to chat to other people who've perhaps been swimming for longer Mm. and get some tips perhaps even go and go to a swim meet so you are with other people right from the beginning yeah and what they should be telling you is to just take it very slowly um it doesn't matter if you wear a wetsuit i think there's a lot of snobbery about that 
the important thing is to get in the water and get out safely um, and start to understand how the cold impacts on your body mm. and how you react to it afterwards because you can carry on reacting to the cold water quite a long time after you've got out yeah so the key things that you need to have are a hot drink um even and i i would say you could start at this time of year but literally you need to go in for just seconds uh, i mean i'm not going to specify a time because everybody's different mm. um, but you need a hot drink even if you start when the water's warmer because as soon as you get out i have a hot drink and it starts to warm your core up so th that's key um and I, I won't go into all the physiology of it but it's all about your blood going back out to the cold extremities then it goes back through your heart so your body temperature drops even more yeah. you know after you've got out so if you can start warming up the blood straight away you won't um suffer after drop hopefully which can be a horrible experience hmm. um so hot drink warm layers take your sweat stuff off as soon as you get out um because you don't want it clinging to you um go with other people choose a nice sunny day so that you actually feel the benefit of the sun on your body as well yeah. um don't start necessarily on a horrible day <laughs> work up to that um and just relax just enjoy it it's not a competition um and just because somebody else stays in 10 minutes if you're just in there 30 seconds it doesn't matter but you know don't put yourself off next time go for a little longer and just take it really really gently and it, you're meant to be enjoying it it's yeah. not it's not a test yeah that's really interesting and because I, I i once did um a um sunrise um summer solstice outdoor swimming at an outdoor swimming pool and I, I stayed in probably far too long so I stayed in for about 40 minutes and I did loads wow. of you know I did probably a mile in it um, but for the entire day Sarah I came up in hives I had I had a reaction to it and I came up my whole body oh, really? came up in hives and it kind of scared me a bit but I thought actually no I just stayed in too long I just should yes. have should have listened to my body and it's about yeah. finding out what's right for you isn't it and what works for you there's one key thing to remember is as soon as you start feeling warm and relaxed and thinking, Oh, this is lovely. I could stay in forever. Get out because right. that's the, you're starting to go into hypothermia. Right. So do not, if you feel warm, get out. Yeah, that's a great tip. <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> Has it made you want to have even more adventures with this? I mean, have you got challenges that you would really like to, to, to compete in and push yourself even more in the next few years? with wild swimming i think uh this i'd like to swim in ice i would like to cut a hole in ice with a chainsaw well i probably wouldn't use the chainsaw but <laughs> <laughs> i'd like to do that because i just see all these pictures flood instagram with these you know gorgeous scandinavian women sitting yeah. in ice holes and i just think i would love to do that absolutely love to do it and the other thing i'd like to do is just find some hot springs. Um, I don't necessarily need to have cold water all the time. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I love water and I just want to go exploring in mountains, forests, somewhere lovely and hot <laughs> mm. um, and just find water and just swim and meet all the other people who are doing the same thing and just share some experiences. Yeah. yeah. So all over the world. That's what I'd love to do. Yeah, I mean, I think it's those connections, isn't it? It, it? It's you're doing something that really brings you joy, but it's what else it brings to you. It's not just the yeah, physical, the yeah. mental. It's all those new connections that you're making, and one thing leads to another thing, which is really exciting, isn't it? Exactly, and I also find it inspires me creatively. Um, you know, I've I've been able to. It's opened up my mind and my imagination to writing again, because that kind of goes on hold when you've got kids and you're trying to earn a living and so on. So it's given me that space and that headspace to write again, which has been wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And you are a beautiful writer. And that's one thing that I really love about your Instagram feed. You, your, your words are really beautiful. They're really, Thank you. Um, they're, 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 they're perfect for every photo that you put in. They match the, the photo perfectly. Oh, and really, I try. Um, yeah. yeah. Each one I try to make a story. I do take quite a lot of time as my son will verify. <laughs> um, but it means a lot to me and to get, 
that sort of feedback thank you that that means a huge amount and also you know we talked earlier about you know our children are both similar ages and, and they're ready to flee the nest or have flown, flown the nest so this is your time isn't it and do you really feel like this is your chapter now to get on and do what you yeah. want to do absolutely i feel so excited um I was trying to move south <laughs> a little while ago and then various things happened so that's been put on hold and it was such a relief that I know I don't have to now mm. I can stay here but as soon as I don't have to be here for my son's schooling mm. um, I, I want to go and explore and because I'm a writer and I can t do everything on my laptop I could literally as long as I've got internet connection um, I can go anywhere and I've always said that but I've always had children yeah you know that hold hold you back but um, I'm sorry as soon as he's <laughs> gone to university or whatever I'm going to um, go exploring yes yeah. and go and visit all these people I've been making connections with would you write a book about your journey and about wild swimming because I would love to read a book that you'd write about that I am oh, good. <laughs> I wrote a book I had it with an agent for a while um unfortunately it was considered a niche market at the time that was just over a year ago so i've rewritten it um and i'm about to submit it to agents oh, so brilliant. and then i've got a fiction book as well that i've written so that's i mean I, my head is just brimming full of the ideas and i just i want to i do i want to share it mm. in book form yeah yeah Oh, well, that's exciting. Yeah, looking for, yes, I will do. That's really exciting. So how can people find you if they'd like to, to know more about you? Uh, through Instagram is probably the easiest, at Bumble Barnes. Um, and I do love, I really enjoy connecting with people. And I'm really happy to talk people through how to start with wild swimming um, and talk to people about body confidence, um, starting all over again if you've had some awful illness you know just just make regaining your life living your life to yeah. the full well i would love to come and join you when we can oh yes to, to do some swimming and i did do i've done the great north swim a couple of times in lake windermere and oh, it's wow. just such a beautiful place to swim in and so but i would love to come and join you that's one of the things about out of the bubble moving forward i really want to make these connections in real life and meet the people that i yes. interview and join in and take part as a beginner so i'll uh, i shall uh, come and visit you when the time is right that'd be amazing fantastic i would love that rachel thank you so my last question to everybody that I ask, because I think women are notoriously bad at accepting compliments. So if you were to pay yourself a compliment, what would it be? I think it would be the inner glow that comes out of me when I'm talking about something that I'm passionate about. Um, and I think possibly my smile she says, yeah. not able to smile. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're smiling now. <laughs> thank you so much. And the joy that you, you get out of it definitely comes across in everything that you share. So Good. thank you so much for sharing Good. and for being a real inspiration to us all. So it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye. So I hope you found Sarah's story inspiring and it definitely really motivated me to want to be able to go wild swimming more. Perhaps not when it's snowing outside in Yorkshire, but when the weather warms up, it's something that I am going to be doing a lot more of in 2021. You know, you never know, you might be able to come and join me, we might be able to create some events around this and it's something that Sarah would be keen to get involved with. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in the future. But it's about listening to your body and doing what works for you and finding those moments of joy. So perhaps wild swimming might bring you that, who knows? but it is stepping out of your comfort zone and trying new things and as Sarah really shows that there's never a wrong age to start something new so um, what are you waiting for do whatever brings you joy and passion and I'd love to hear how it goes so keep in touch I'll be back next week with some more inspiration but in the meantime have a great week <laughs>